Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Showdown. It is the Star Wars semifinals here, the tournament. It has almost, almost concluded. Two more matches left before we find out who the champion Alex Damon's next contender is. Joining me here, as always, my partner in crime from the beginning, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark, how's it going, buddy? Oh, Christian, not since the legendary fighter pilot Dak and he felt he could take on the whole empire by himself. Has there been so much excitement in the Star Wars galaxy? Now, didn't end well for Dak that day, but for us, Christian, we have two of the finest Star Wars brains in the Milky Way. We have a legion of fans watching us live on Twitch, and it's up to you and me to not screw it up. Yeah, good luck on that one. So there is a uh, there is so much hype around this tournament. This was something because of the situation that we have uh, that we're in this year. Digital was a question. Digital was a question. Was it going to work? And boy, has it ever. Not only did we get the uh, the opportunity to just do the matches and we'll be doing the regular season uh, digital, but the Star Wars division, we maybe got like one or two a year. We have done so many matches and so many great matches. And even though most people say this, the following uh, statement, I don't know any of the answers. But I'm watching people watch it, uh, get these right, and I'm saying, how do they know it? Because these competitors are something else, Mark. Yeah, I mean, you got lights out and you got ace. You got Andres Cabrera going up against Laura Kelly, and Andres has been a force to be reckoned with. He's pulled some upsets already. He's knocked off some of the old guard, and he says, I'm a new generation, and I'm ready to be here right now. And then you have Laura Kelly, who's going to be his toughest opponent he's ever faced, not just in trivia, not just in Star Wars trivia, but probably anything in life. She is knocked down, drag out, earning her nickname, lights out, because I don't even know if she's missed a question yet in this match. She's she has been fr well first round certainly not and the pairing with Shannon Barney the queen of corruption has worked wonders for Laura and I'm not even talking about her game in general but I'm talking about the attitude um, she has just has this confidence and sometimes when players have this confidence you're like all right Brandon Hannah relax but when it comes to Laura it's like y y it fits it fits it's weird she scares the hell out of me but it fits and when you're when you're watching the way that she communicates with shannon it is it's like she belongs in corruption and yes granted she might have gone to the dark side but she's powerful now the question is like you said earlier andres cabrera it has been the overall story of this tournament though he really has been he was he, he's in a play-in match Everyone said, well, I don't know. That That's showing against Parker. He, this Quevedo guy is going to beat him. Well, that didn't happen. Well, you know, he, he beat a, a rookie. The guy didn't know really what he was doing. Ken will, Ken's an ex-champion. He'll take him out. Well, that didn't happen. Andres Cabrera is the only competitor ever in Star Wars history to go 2-0 and o in the division. Yeah, that's right. I think he's representing his faction well, as well as Laura is hers. When you look at Andres, being a part of swag, I mean, he puts the drip drip in swag, and not just because he drank a gallon of water before 8 a.m. On the other side of the table, you have lights out Laura Kelly, who probably had a nice glass of champagne around noon and is feeling great and does not fear any opponent. So again, thank you also to Jay Golden Eyes who donated um, 10 subs here. So for those people doing that out there, really appreciate that. I know everybody's hyped up for this match. Want to see exactly how we got here today. Well, Nerd Chronic, he never disappoints, does he? Well, we're going to find out how we got here. Give me, give me prep time, and I, I think I can keep up with anyone if I have enough prep time, and now I know exactly what to expect. I'm one with the Force, the swag is with me. I'm one with the Force, the swag is with me. Once we master this challenge, there's nothing stopping us from, well, from bringing true balance to the Force. Once again, first of all, people didn't think that Andres would make it to the qualifier. Nobody. And here he is beating a former champion. He is, I believe, the first person to go 2-0 in Star Wars since Alex Damon. Ace has been on a tear. What can I say? Now that they've seen what he can do, let it be known that Ace will not be stopped until he brings balance to the Force. Ace 
It's the chosen one. It's no secret that Laura Kelly is the best Star Wars player in this tournament. But something you may not know about her is that she also happens to be an epic storyteller. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Ace who spent the summer of 2020 rising to mediocrity. Now, Ace did not have to earn his place in this story. He got there by taking down a has-been named Ken Knapsack. And do you want to know what I think? I think Ken lost on purpose. You just robbed me of my chance to face a former champion, and I'm not happy about it. What happened? You were supposed to destroy the dark side, not join them, and yet here you are, with corruption? This has been real fun and all, but it's time to turn the lights out on swag. You, you're feeling like the favorite. You're feeling well prepared. You're not feeling like it's, uh, you're not scared of it, but basically. No, no, yeah. no, I'm not. <laughs> and I get it, you got all that confidence. Former number one contender, everyone thinks you're gonna win. That's cool, keep doubting me. And I'm gonna keep introducing you to Upset City. I'm going for the perfect match. There's gonna be a moment in round one when you will get to see the lifeblood drain from a grown man's face as he realizes he's playing against a competitor who is actually trying. I'm bringing the light side. I'm bringing the swag. My manager, Winston Marshall, has all the wisdom of Master Yoda and all the power of Mace Windu. This fire that I've been bringing, it doesn't stop. Mira, señorita, que este fuego no termina. Ain't no lights getting turned off, especially not from you. You, Andres Cabrera, are a tumbleweed that didn't even make it onto the road before I crushed you and left you to rot in the sun. I am your reckoning, Ace, and I am on a mission. So I recommend you stay the hell out of my way. The chills are real. I mean, holy mackerel. That is something. That is something. That is yeah, that's a pretty epic storytelling there by our pal Eric Nerd Chronic. My only question, Christian, who is the chubby kid with the unkempt hair you were announcing with? I don't know who that joker was. I'm glad you called in me for the big match. All right. We all know you look very nice now. You you, you cleaned yourself up. You look, hey, you look well, I know. It's for the semifinals match. We understand that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I, I think when it comes to the faction standings when you look at the faction standings right now um you have the finstock exchange who has a massive massive lead um they have right now they are up by nine points over swag if somehow andres cabrera can deliver a tko or a ko here and get four big points they only see themselves five points away or maybe even six which would be great for swag corruption they need this and they need it bad they're in seventh place right now they're tied for se the between with, with the dungeon and they need this they really need it uh badly here in order for them to make any kind of run at all to even get themselves in like fourth or fifth place they need this uh so laura kelly is here fighting for corruption andres is fighting for swag and the winner will face andrew the hunter Dimolanta next week july 8th right here on twitch on the schmodown channel all right without any further ado we got to bring in both the managers of swag and corruption here we go again shannon barney and winston marshall winston andres has been counted out every time he's played he, uh, you said it when you put him in because even myself when you when I said who are your competitors for Star Wars and you said Andres and I said is he is he ready he said oh he's ready and boy has he ever been this is the this is once again coming in as a heavy underdog how are you feeling how's he feeling first of all Shannon hello what have we here second of all of course Ace is ready I've, this man I'm gonna tell you something that's been just so kind of crazy. A lot of people know that I've been uh, working on my show. I've been editing a lot, right? So I took some time off on Monday uh, to check in on my boy. And I, uh, you know, we got the faction together and we decided to just throw every question we could possibly think of. My guy, 
miss not a thing. It's almost as if he was inside the force. He was a hologram, a force ghost. He knew everything that was to know. So yes, I'm not concerned about the lights being turned off. I was born in the darkness, all right? And I don't even care that I'm mixing franchises. <laughs> Shannon, uh, this is, look, you, you have talked about Laura Kelly high praises and rightfully so she has a brand new attitude she has been playing lights out you have deemed this in the beginning that she is no longer the luminous the light is gone and lights out it has become why is she why does this new attitude work for her and what's going to happen today well first of all i just like to say that as i'm out here looking into the boys club it gives me no greater pleasure to kick this door down today to let Laura Kelly in to dismantle the whole thing. I don't actually want to talk about why her journey to the dark side has been so advantageous for her because you're seeing it in her work every single time she gets on the screen and it speaks for itself. Now, Winston, my friend, last time you and I met, you were very eager to get me back in this ring, champagne in hand, ready to party. And I figured since we are back here and since we're going to beat you again, the very least I could do is honor your request. So Winston, Marshall, Ace Cabrera, here's to you and the end of your tournament run in Star Wars. Oh, wow, she went right to the bottle, Christian. That is someone who means business. Now, if I'm looking at Shannon and Winston, Shannon, it looks like you just cleaned your place, which is very admirable. Winston, uh, I feel like Marty McFly just walked into Doc Brown's apartment at the beginning of Back to the Future. <laughs> but I'm gonna ask you all about round one and about all the challenges that we've seen in this tournament so far. As a manager, do you have your antenna up in the first round looking for maybe some sort of possible advantage and maybe even to issue a challenge? I'll be real with you. This isn't coming down to Ace versus Laura. I know that's why we showed up here. I know that that's the name on the marquee. This is gonna come down to myself and Shannon. I watched the other matches. I can't believe that Sam Levine, double belted former champion that he was, did not challenge the absolute absolutes. I watched all the movies over and over again because I'm right there with my boy. I'm watching for all of these. And what's going to be the difference maker? Because my boy is more than enough of a match. This is gonna come down to you and me, Shannon. So don't drink too much of your champagne. I do have my adult LaCroix here though, so. <laughs> All right. So at least we can agree on one thing, Winston. Uh, we're both ready to challenge the hell out of this match and I've got my eyes on all of you. So let's do this. All right, well, thank you to both Shannon Barney, Winston Marshall. They are ready. And are you ready, my friend? Uh, Christian, in the words of Biston the Space Monkey. Yeah, I understood that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first. <laughs> Representing swag and the meaning of with a record of two wins, no defeats in the Star Wars division. He is Andre Andres Ace Cabrera. Andres, dude, I've known you for a long time, my man. I have watched you in general in your career kind of watched you grow from back in what 2015 when you joined schmoes no and here you are today 2-0 and in the star wars division where nobody thought you had a chance nobody thought you were going to get past that first round and rb3 this morning on sen said you like that you like when people doubt you because it motivates you is that accurate yeah, I mean, anything to motivate me, that's all I need, right? Just like Michael Jordan, I just need anything I need to keep me going. But yeah, I mean, no matter what, I keep winning and I'm going to keep being the underdog and I'll take it because I'm going to keep winning. Yeah, Ace, you know, you bring up athletics and now you're speaking my language. I know that you're a great distance runner. If you put this tournament in terms of a marathon, how do you feel right now? Are, are you worried about using your final kick too early? Do you think you have enough left to get not just past Laura, but ultimately past Andrew DeMolanta? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My thing is is one victory at a time, but mine is always like I'm ready for not just this match, but the following match as well. So always staying prepped, always staying ready is kind of my mentality. Last question here for you, Ace, before we bring in Laura. Uh, you know, Shannon and Laura have been talking a lot. I mean, over the last couple days, uh, Laura Kelly has called you so much as, as a tumbleweed and yeah. said that you, you know, you you took away her opportunity to play Ken, and she also is doesn't seem to be taking you maybe as serious as uh, as you believe you should be. How do you feel about Laura? Because you were a fan of Laura. You watched Laura last year. And how do you feel about her attitude from last year to this year? Uh, that's fine with me. Yeah, keep underestimating me. Like I said in the promo, I I'll take it. You, you see me as like another tumbleweed, and then you get surprised, and I'll end up beating you. So I'm cool with it. All right, Andres, good luck to you. We'll see you in a moment here. All right. It's a confident kid, Christian. And... His opponent, representing corruption, with a record of two wins, two defeats in the Star Wars division. She is Laura Lightsaber. Laura lights out Kelly. Corruption. Laura, known you for a little bit now when it's come to the Star Wars division. The difference from you as a competitor from your first match until now is is just more so in the attitudes is, is monumental. What do you think has changed from your debut match at, at Celebration to uh, to now? <laughs> My a lot has changed. Uh, I will say, though, I think, you know, the attitude was sort of there all the time. It was just sort of buried underneath this sad little light side worshiper, little Jedi out there with her two little blue lightsabers. Wasn't that cute, though? It was so cute. It was almost as cute as Ace thinking he's going to walk away from this match with a three and oh, wreck. <laughs> Sorry, that's just it's that's com it's so completely preposterous. I can't even like. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen anyone look more intimidating just holding a marker. The pen is truly mightier than the sword. And Laura, I, I got to ask you, because in the movies, Yoda says that, no, the dark side isn't stronger than the light side. You seem to have gone to the dark side. Can you tell us from being over there, is the dark side stronger? It absolutely is, Mark. Thank you for asking. I'm very much enjoying my little dark side, uh, you know, attitude here. I think it's I think it's going to be here to stay for a little while. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm going to be here to stay too because this will not be my last match in this tournament. All right, so Laura Kelly is all business as she prepares for it. Lights Out against Andres Ace Cabrera. All right, here we go now, bringing in both Andres and Laura. Here we go. Both Laura and Andres are here, Mark. Rules of round number one. This is the time that Darth Vader once told me, prepare your troops for the ground assault on Hoth. In round number one, the field of competitors numbering two is going to hear 10 questions from 10 different corners of movie trivia, schmodown, Star Wars know-how. Each question is worth one point, no penalty for missing a question, no stealing in round at number one. As soon as we ask a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on whatever tablet you provided with, whatever writing utensil you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor, you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate a challenge, but it's up to your manager to ultimately ratify and confirm a said challenge. All right, so with that, we ask Laura Kelly, are you ready? Absolutely, let's go. Andres, are you ready? Ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, first round, first question. First topic is Revenge of the Sith. What news did Padme have for Anakin when he returned to Coruscant after rescuing Palpatine? Uh, I have some news, Christian. Uh, I want to remind everybody out there in the chat, please do not type in 
the answer. If you think you know it, refrain. You will unfortunately be escorted out. Three, two, jettison. One. Pens down, please. Pens down, Laura. That she's pregnant. Yes, Andres. She's pregnant. One to one. All right, next question, Mark. (laughs) Well, that's never good news. Your next question is in the world of The Force Awakens. And the question, who convinces Supreme Leader Snoke that the Starkiller base weapon should be used? Hmm. You can see the, how intense the semifinals have become. Oh, yeah, it's getting hot in here. I should have turned on and my AC. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andres. Hux. Yes, Laura. Hux. Tie game, 2-2. Two, two. All right, next question. Next question, here it is. The Empire Strikes Back. In The Empire Strikes Back, who says he's as clumsy as he is stupid? <laughs> I've said that about multiple people. <laughs> well, yeah, I've heard you say it. We probably said it about each other on multiple occasions. Five, four, at my wedding. Three, two, one. Yeah. Pens down, please. And Laura. Vader. Yes. Andres. Darth Vader. Yes. Okay. 3-3. Three, three. Next question, Mark. All right. Your next question comes in the world of the Phantom Menace. And it is, how old was Anakin when Qui-Gon and the others found him on Tatooine? How old were you, Christian, when the Star Wars universe found you? Do you remember? I'm not answering that question. I don't want to lead anybody. What? <laughs> Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, please. And Andres. Nine years old. That is correct. Laura. I went with 10. Oh, Andres takes the first lead here. And Laura Kelly misses her first question ever in the uh, Star Wars first round. All right. So Andres strikes first. All right. Next question. Next question. Solo. Solo. On what planet? Do Han and Beckett have their final gunslinger duel leading to Beckett's death? Uh, Fun to kind of glance over at the chat from time to time, Christian. Uh, Both Video Drew and Ken Knapsack making waves in the chat room already. Ken's just here to look at your haircut. Who is it? That's true. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And Laura. Savarine. Yes. Andres. Savarine. Correct. Andres still 5-4. Andres now work trying to get that perfect round as we are halfway through. Mark, next question. All right. Your next question is in the world of what is called the Citizen Kane of Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. And the question. Before being ushered off the plank above the Sarlacc, Luke says, Jabba, this is your last chance. Free us or what? One of my all-time favorite scenes in my all-time favorite movie. It's a good one. Chills, and Christian. Five, Literal chills. Four, I'm shivering. Three. Repeat the question. First one. I can do that. All right. First of three. In Return of the Jedi, before being ushered off the plank above the Sarlacc, Luke says, Jabba, this is your last chance. Free us or blank. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, please. Andres? I said die? That's correct. And okay. Laura? Whew. Die. There you go. Andres using that repeat, but it, you, it it worked for him because he kept that round there, too. Excuse me, kept that point in the round. And here's our next question. It's from the rise of Skywalker. What is the opening line of the crawl in the rise of Skywalker? That's a solid JTE rule usage right there, Christian. Uh, You can tell Andre's original answer was party. Java, free us or party? Yeah. Doesn't hit as much. No. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Laura Kelly. The dead speak. Yes, they do. And Andres. The dead speak. Andres Cabrera, still perfect here. Seven, six. Kelly just one point behind. As we see a seven to six score going into question number eight, Mark. That's right. We move on to 
Question number eight. And your query is, in the world of Attack of the Clones, it's simple. In what year was Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones released in theaters? Christian, I got to tell you, I love that both Laura and Andres used the exclamation point in their last answer. If, if one of them had done a question mark, do we? Five. I'm glad they didn't do that. Four. Three. Did that speak? Two, one. Hands down, please. And Andres. 2002. That is correct. Laura. 2002. Yes. Eight to seven. Eight to seven. Andres keeping a one point lead over lights out. As we get to our next question. Number nine. Rogue One. In Rogue One, which character says the force moves darkly near a creature that is about to kill? That sounds scary. Looking I, just at watch, it. I just watched this movie the other day. I told you that, right? You watch it with your family? With the daughter, yeah. And five. She has a name. Three, two, one. Prove it. And pens down, please. Laura. Chirut Imwe. That is correct. Andres. Chirut Imwe. That is correct. All right. So, Andres Cabrera has now put himself in position for a perfect round here should he hit this next one. If he does, then he and only he will have the bonus question here. Mark, what would that question be? Uh, it comes from a movie that was released a couple years before Andres was born. Um, this is episode four, A New Hope. And the question, how many credits does Obi-Wan say he will give to Han in advance to get himself and Luke off Tatooine and to Alderaan. I love this question because it's tough and I knew it. Yeah, it's a good one. Rare. <laughs> That's the rare. Reason. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Andres. 2,000. Perfect round for Andres Cabrera and for Laura. 2,000. Yes, it is. But Andres Cabrera, 10-9. Going up by one point. So this next question will be for Andres and only Andres as we get to it. Ace, are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Here's your bonus question. In Revenge of the Sith, who can be heard saying, army or not, you must realize you are doomed? Uh, General Grievous. For one more point, Andres Cabrera goes up by two here. 11 9 over Laura Kelly. All right, so round number two. Round number two begins. Mark, how does round number two go? We're inviting the managers in to witness the reading of the rules, a time honored tradition. Round number two is known as the wheel round. It's Star Wars, so this is the wheel of destiny. Once you settle on a category, you're going to be asked five questions from said genre of Star Wars movie trivia schmodown know how. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to a mere one. Uh, Christian, we still have three usages of the JTE rule for Laura Kelly. We have two left for Andres, who did have a perfect round, and thus Andres is going to have the decision to make alongside his manager, Winston Marshall, should he want to spin first or defer to his opponent. All right, so we're going to drop uh, both Shannon and Laura out here for a second. Winston, you got 60 seconds to talk to Ace starting now. So I'm going to need you when this match is over to call everybody that's backstage that could see me and see what happened when you took that league, dog. Uh, nice. We go. But, yeah. but we remain the underdog. Keep that mentality because that's what feeds your fire. That's when the force gets strong in you. You hear me? Yeah. You are killing it. A perfect round, baby. Come on now. Come on now. And I was right there with you. I was answering some of them questions. I said, I can do this too. Let's go, son. I stop. believe in you. Stuff now. Do that stuff. Stop. That stuff. I do apologize. I'm a little hype. All right. So uh, here's what I would suggest. And this is completely up to you. Keep pouring it on. Let's go. Yeah. First. Let's do it, man. Let's Pour go first. On. All right. Pour so Andres, you, you want to spin first? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. So Andres will be spinning first. Here's the first spin. Not a bad strategy there, Christian. It's always intimidating to look up at a double digit lead your opponent might have. Well, he's going to find out he is. He does have the lead here, too. He knew it. He's, he, if you asked him, he would have said, uh, he lands on, that? It lands on that the line. like Rogue Wait, One. Wait, is uh, that Rogue One or is it Rise of Skywalker? It's closer. Yeah. It is closer. Go go closer to it and it, you'll see it. It, it is uh, Rogue it's One. Rogue, mm -hmm. It's Rogue One. So do you want Rogue One? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So Rogue One. 
Rogue One it will be. All right, so we're going to move uh, Winston out. We're going to bring back Laura. All right, Rogue One, you're going to get five questions here in the category of Rogue One. Are you ready? Ready. Here you go. At what location does Cassian meet his contact at the beginning of the film? Ring of Caffrine. That is correct. Two points. Question two. What character attempts to say the classic Star Wars phrase, I have a bad feeling about this, before being interrupted? K2SO. For two more points. Question three. For what reason did the Rebel Alliance distance themselves from Saw? He was an extremist. He was an extremist is correct. All right. Two more points. Next question. Question number four. After K2 downloads the map to the data vault, he learns that the optimal route to the vault puts how many stormtroopers in their path? 89. That is correct for two more points. Andres Cabrera with a massive two points there. So that is question number four. Here's your final question, Andres. Here you go. What is the name of the human male attendant that informs Darth Vader that Director Krennic has arrived on Mustafar? Venier. That is also correct. Andres Cabrera annihilating that Rogue One category finds himself up 21 to 9. 21 to 9. Massive, massive uh, round. All right, Andres is going to drop you out here. Going to bring in Shannon. Shannon, you got 60 seconds here to talk to Laura starting now. Laura, shake off that round one. You missed one question. It doesn't matter. As we've seen by his previous matches, you don't have to be perfect to beat Ace Cabrera. Don't worry about the number that you see on the screen. The only reason that lead is so large is because you haven't played your round yet. So let's spin this wheel and catch up. I All like right. it. Let's do it. Okay. So with that, Laura Kelly will be spinning. Here we go. Here is the uh, here's the spin. Christian, just about anybody would be shaking in their boots after what Ace just did, but Laura still seeming cool, confident, collected, the three C's. Here is Mixed Bag. I would love to spin again. Spinning away from Mixed Bag, and here we go. <laughs> mixed Bag rarely gets the love it's due. <laughs> you can spin one more time. I love the sound effect. It's really good. This is Ben Burt quality. Oh, it's Mixed Bag again! Mixed Bag. You uh, got this. Don't even worry about it, Laura. <laughs> All right, Mixed Bag. No, that was it. That was for Mixed Bag it is. Mixed Bag it is. And oh, okay. Mixed Bag. All right. So we're going to drop Shannon out, and we're going to bring back Andres Grove. Sorry. Hold on a second. All right. All right. So, Laura, you got... Five questions here in mixed bag. Are you ready to go? I am. Let's do this. All right, Mark. All right, Laura. Well, in the world of mixed bag, where we reach our hands and there could be any Star Wars we pull out. In the Star Wars franchise, what species is the leader of the Trade Federation? Nemoidian. Two points for Laura Kelly. Off to a good start. Your next question in mixed bag. Laura, in the Clone Wars... Count Dooku manages to trap Anakin and Ahsoka, who then escape and hijack a derelict transport. Who else do they escape with? Rada. That is incorrect. For a two-point steal. R2-D2. Didn't even need to give you the question again. R2-D2 is correct for two points. I would like to challenge. You want to bring in, you want to bring in uh, Shannon? Hold on, okay, one second. Shannon, mm -hmm. uh, okay, Laura, go ahead. Tell us, you guys can talk about the, uh, what you want to challenge. Well, acknowledge that R two D two is correct. Rada is also with them. Okay, all right. Give us a is, uh, Shannon. You want to challenge? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna get a challenge on the table. Uh, I am going to. We're gonna put it on timeout for a second. We're gonna call both PJ and uh, Mark. We'll be right back. All right. We're back, and we have the combination. 
After consulting with the judges, Christian Harloff and myself have come up with the ruling that, yes, R2-D2 was with them, as was Rada. Rada was also with the gang, and so Laura Kelly, because it was her question, and she answered Rada, is going to get the two points. So the two points is going to come off of Ace's board because he got the steal correct. And now Rada, and that is two points, going to be added on to Laura's total. She still has a perfect round number two. So even though I was right, I still stole it. Well, it doesn't Shouldn't matter. she get a new question? No, because she the, was also correct. She was also correct. So what it would be, yeah. so yeah. I, either Rod, the, the, the answer could have been either Rada or R2-D2. So had she said either one of those two, she should have been correct. She said Rada. It was ruled incorrect. So she challenged and she gets the points. So and they will, they will also keep their uh, challenge as well. So they did not lose their challenge. All right. Going to drop out Shannon and uh, oops, not Laura. Need her. Ha ha. We won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So now the score, if we have it updated now, is 21 to 13. Laura Kelly now would get her third question. Her third question. Here it is. All right. And fun fact, uh, Laura also retains her use of a challenge. Should have come up later. Laura, your third question of five in mixed bag is, what planet is ruled from its capital at Bestine? Tatooine. Tatooine is correct for two points. All right, question number four. This is question four of five, Laura. This is in the world of mixed bag. Whose last words are, there's good in him? I know, I know there's still. Padme Amidala. That's right. Died of a broken heart. Tragic. I like her kids, though. That's it. Last I question. Last question, yep. For two more points, Laura, to go into round number three, trailing only by two. What planet has served as the capital of the galaxy since the ancient days of the Old Republic? Coruscant. It's a fun party planet, and Laura Kelly has cut the lead to two as we head into the final round of Will to Determine the Match, Christian. All right, so we find ourselves now. Ace is still in the lead here with a massive round two, but Laura Kelly also has a great round with that challenge. Brilliant challenge here as we see ourselves 21-19 getting into round number three. Mark, how does round number three go? Oh, how doesn't round number three go? This is where it gets fun, everybody, because in round number three, you're going to have three questions asked to each of you. Each of you get three questions. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. The last one, should we need to go that far, is worth five big points. How do we get those questions? Will you give us a series of numbers? We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers can range from one to 20. You may not pick the same number as your opponent. So uh, Lights Out has got a perfect round two, but so did Andres Cabrera. And so Andres, it's gonna be your call for your three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what feels the most destined? Uh, let's do four, 11, and 13. Four, 11, and 13 for Andres and Laura. Two, five, and seven. Two, five, and seven. All right, so Winston, you're gonna have 60 seconds here to talk to Andres first before we drop you out. All right, starting now. My guy. My guy. Let us go. Vamos. All right? Let's go. Do not stop. Pour it on. Ooh. That's all I got to say. I have nothing else to say. You've been killing it. I got it. I feel it. I, I, d <sighs> yes. Not to, not to ace. I don't know if what we're seeing. Did the private chat get seen? Is that? I'm just asking the question about that. What's that? What is that? Okay, I was yelling wait and trying to get someone's attention before the yeah. question was asked after the challenge. Yeah. So I had a question about the question and I almost want to challenge it in and of itself in that it is the question itself does not say name one of the people that escaped with them. It said who escaped with them, implying that it would have to be both people. Do you want to, do you want to challenge this? I do want to challenge this. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to challenge the question. That's fine. You can challenge it. All right. Uh, so by, uh, just to be specific, I know what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying you're saying what the question asked. So we're gonna we're gonna put the challenge on the board for that question. All right.
Here we're we back, go. and after deliberating with the judges, I have the honor of reading what's on the teleprompter. So, after consulting with all necessary parties, we have elected two things. One, because for whatever reason, we weren't able to see Winston's challenge in the private chat or anywhere else, and another question had already been asked, we cannot grant the challenge. We cannot retroactively go back and grant the challenge, which is unfortunate. However, because that would have been a challenge on a question that had already been asked and we had moved on, Winston and Team Swag do retain their use of a challenge should they need it in round number three. So no challenge has been issued. No challenge has been wasted. All right. So with that, we are now going to get, so we're going to drop Winston out here. Winston will be dropped out. So will Andres and Shannon, you got 60 seconds to talk to Laura. Here we go. Laura, you got this. We still have three questions. They're going to have to answer theirs. This is where you shine. The pressure's on Ace because now he's got to finish this perfect game to beat you and he's not going to do it. So don't sweat it. Don't worry. Sit back, relax, and you'll get your questions too. This is where you thrive. So enjoy it. All right. So here we go. We'll, we'll drop Shannon back out. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Category number two, The Phantom Menace. In The Phantom Menace, who tells Qui-Gon, you Jedi are far too reckless? I just, I answered that during the Kaveto match. Is that accurate? Yes. Padme Amidala is the answer, but I don't know if that matters at this point. I, I, I was asked that during the Kaveto match. Uh, oops. <laughs> I mean, I know you know it, but still. All right. It's a repeat well, question. It's a repeat question from this season. Um, yes. All right. So hold on a second, please. No Throw that graphic back up. Question was not asked in an official match. Uh, you, your match against Josh Quevedo, it was 2017 in a TKO. It was not asked inside of it. Uh, we just checked the document. We just checked the official, the official game. It was not asked, and we're going to award the two points, and it does count as a challenge. Uh, so Swag will lose a challenge, and so Laura Kelly will get the two points. I, I think we can all agree. Whatever gets PJ some FaceTime is a good thing. So it's 21-21, and now we get to the next question here. Andres Cabrera chose uh, Category 4, Mark. C category yes, he did, Christian. And Jim Harbaugh's number corresponds to... Uh, Ace, have you ever heard of this movie? It's called Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Ooh, yeah. And you're, two, you're used to answering two-pointers in this. Your question this time, Director Krennic is often seen flanked by what elite class of Stormtrooper? Death Troopers. Doesn't sound fun, but that is correct for two points, and Ace goes back up by two points. All right, Laura Kelly now will get the three-pointer, and that's Category 5, Laura. Category 5. That's Solo, Star Wars Story. Here it is. Lando is seen creating a hollow journal of his life and adventures. What does he call his journal? The Calrissian Chronicles. Correct. For three more points, Laura Kelly taking the lead once again, bouncing back to Andres Cabrera. And Andres Cabrera now has category number 11, Mark. Number 11. Coolest sounding diary I've ever heard. Uh, Andres, you selected Mark Rippon's number, and that corresponds to who said it. These are Star Ooh. Wars quotes and quotables. And once again, this could give you the lead again, should you get it right. In what Star Wars film will you find the following quote? There were a lot of explosions for two people blending in. Rogue One. Rogue One is correct for three points. And Christian, the, the guy's got some Rogue One questions and he's got some answers. Andres Cabrera has been perfect so far. He's been he was striving for that perfect game and he's got a potential to hit it. But... Laura Kelly has category number seven. If she hits it, she bounces back to Ace and forces him to hit his five point. Laura, are you ready? Let's do this. The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. Here you go. 
After escaping Jakku, while Rey was fixing the Falcon, what was the tool that she asked for after asking for the Harris wrench? Pilex driver. For five points, Laura Kelly hits the five points, forces it. Now it is 29 to 26. 29, 26. Andres Cabrera can win the game. If he hits the five pointer, he goes on to face Andrew Dimolanta. However, if he misses, if he misses, then Laura Kelly will win the game. All right, here you go. Mark, he chose category number 13. Yes, he did, Christian. And Andres has unknowingly selected a movie that is almost as challenged as this match, The Last Jedi. Nice. And your question. This is for the win. To move on and face Andrew Demolanta in the final, Rose and Finn were arrested for a parking violation on Canto Bite. What code number did that violation pertain to? Parking violation 27B stroke six. And your winner, advancing to the finals, Andres Cabrera! Andres Cabrera does it. He advances. Laura, up, Laura. going to put you in the waiting room here at the moment. Um, Andres Cabrera goes 3-0. The first Star Wars competitor to ever do it. We see ourselves with the Cinderella final. After all, Andres Ace Cabrera against Andrew the Hunter Dimolanta. Ace pulls up one more upset. Upset city it is. Andres, you fought a hell of a game, a perfect game. You asked. You said this last week, and Laura even said it. You've been looking for that perfect game, and it was all about that one question in the first round. That was everything. It was that first question and that bonus. How are you feeling here with this massive, massive victory? Good. I feel good. I, I wanted this win. I wanted to be in the finals and I want to win this tournament. My thing is always looking towards the next step and the next victory. And again, as I've said before, growing every time I do another match, my thing is to not settle. It's to keep getting better. And I think I can just keep getting better for next week as well. So, yeah, Ace, yeah, if you look at your victories over Josh and Ken, two lights out Star Wars competitors in their own right, it seemed like some fans would make excuses, say, oh, well, maybe uh, Ken is past his prime or, or Josh isn't there yet. But here, I, I don't think anybody can dispute what you just showed the world. In your words, what did you just tell the rest of the galaxy? That I know enough about Star Wars. <laughs> that I know Star Wars and I love Star Wars. And, and my thing is, I am not just the kind of guy who does something halfway in, halfway out. I wanna be all the way in and I wanna show excellence in everything I do. So that is why if you've seen me struggle in the past, I'm gonna keep getting better and improving every time. So my thing is, I belong here and I know Star Wars. Boy, and Christian, we were promised that Winston Marshall was going to give us a reenactment of how he was feeling right after Ace's perfect round number one. Winston, go ahead. I can't right now. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm genuinely emotional. I'm sorry. That's the second one. I'll stop. I'm, I'm really emotional right now. I'm so proud of him. Um, like, legitimately, I know how hard he's been working. And I keep thinking back to the conversation we had before the, the Robert Parker match for IG. And him being like, I, I'm, I, I can do this, man, but I just don't have the time right now. And and I, I'm seeing the legwork and I'm seeing what he's putting in. And this is literally what competition is made of. This is what sports are made of. This is the stuff that inspires people. Um, well, Winston, I can see the emotion on you, my man. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty Thank you, man. Well, you yeah. know what? You know what? Also, Winston, I got to say, because you you have been championing Ace from the beginning and saying how you got to take this guy serious and how much you guys have kind of grown as a family. So is it obviously with the emotion and because everyone has counted him out every single match? I, I mean, yeah. you have to talk to me a little bit. Yeah, I I I want. I, I I said this a million times. I hope all those people that were on the sidelines, they were rooting for everybody else. We don't want. We don't want you now. You know what I'm saying? I want you to sit there and watch with your jaws dropped at what my boy can do. Okay. Y'all can y'all can lift him up once he holds that belt. How about that? But for now, 
anybody that was ride or die, drip, drip, this is this is what this is about. We're going to the finals, then we're going to Damon, and then we're walking away into the sunset. That's what that is right here. Gotta love the emotion here on Winston Marshall. And, and Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, Ace, look, you see that, and you see how... <laughs> A, a perfect ball. game, bro. A perfect game. Yeah, a perfect game. Well, Just can I say? Out. Can yeah, I say on. right now? My thing is, uh, I've said it a million times. Every after show I've ever done relating to the Schmodown, yeah. I met Winston in January when I did uh, uh, a, a match. When I did a match recording, and I swear to you, my knowledge with the Schmodown, my experience with the Schmodown was essentially none. I met Winston and I immediately clicked. Something clicked in me where I was like, "Oh my God, I want to win every freaking match that I'm in now." because I personally got to hang out with him, to talk to him and to really see who he is as a person. And that is what inspired me to double down and really study and really go after it. Because I said to myself, I don't care if it's 10th round, if this guy drafted me, I'm, I'm gonna give it my all. And my thing is I'm doing this 100% for Winston. I mean, look, Andre, the, the, the people, people are saying it in the chat right now, you know, this is a, uh, this is one of the biggest upsets in Schmodown history. One of the biggest upsets in tournament history. Um, you were you were a playing match, and now you're in the finals against Andrew De Melanta. My love towards Laura, I, I actually really do appreciate her. I think she's an amazing competitor, and and I hope people lift her high during this time because I think she's amazing. My second thing too is my mom's birthday today, so I want to wish my mom a happy birthday. I'm sure she's watching. So hey, how, many birthday, bir mom. how many more birthdays we got? You got a victory for RB three. You got a victory for your mama. I'm just gonna move my birthday to next week. All right, that's from now on. My birthday is next Wednesday from here to forever. <laughs> yeah. There's the final score, 31 to 29. Andres, Ace Cabrera becoming the only 3-0 competitor in Schmodown Star Wars history with a perfect game here over Laura Lightsau Kelly. And here's the standings as they are. The Finstock Exchange, 25. Now the swag gets themselves 19 points, 19 points and corruption. Now really going to be leaning on both chance and Mike Kalinowski in the IG tournament to try to do something for them. But thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Going to drop you out here. Um, look, Laura Kelly only missed one question in this whole match. She only missed one. Uh, it just, she was going up against a perfect game and bringing in Shannon, and Laura, sorry, you, Laura. I mean, look, this is uh, you, you also, minus that one question, also missed nothing. You just had that one gap. Uh, did you, did you know it? Was it, did it just at that time? Talk me through that one question about Anakin's age. You know, I wrote down nine on my board, questioned it, and erased it and wrote 10. And that's on me. I should have gone with my first instinct. I should have known by now to go with my first instinct because it's usually right. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, that one's on me and uh, I paid the price for it. So he played a good game. He went perfect. And, you know, I, I'm glad that I forced his hand in that matter. You certainly Laura, did. I'm sure yeah. you have a bottle of champagne chilled somewhere in your abode. And I know that this may not be the occasion you are hoping to crack it open for. But I'll just tell you on behalf of the Schmodown, it's been so impressive to watch your dominance to this point for whatever side of the force you may be on at the time to be a beacon of light and hope in this community we're all better for having you in it and so now i have to ask you just standing on the sideline and watching this finals play out who you got demolanta or cabrera mm, god i would just love to see demolanta eat it you know i, I think i got it i gotta go with ace on this one so that I'm fingers crossed for that. And uh, yeah, it, it's up in the air. So it's hard to say. We'll see. Shannon, mm -hmm. you got to be proud here. I mean, again, it's it's a it's a one point miss. She is she is clearly one of the great competitors here in Star Wars. But Andres just today, Andres has proven himself as one of those great players. He is now uh, going to the finals here. But what what's the plan here for uh, Laura and corruption and corruption mm -hmm. in general? Yeah, listen, um, I may be nasty, but I am fair. And I will say that while arguably Laura doesn't have to play perfect nine times out of 10 to beat Ace, Ace needs to be perfect to beat Laura. So let's not forget that. That being said, he played perfect. Congratulations to him. It's going to be sad to watch him uh, lose to DeMolanta. Although I have to say also, I agree with Laura, I would love for this story to continue for him. If this is the narrative we're writing and this is what 
he's selling, then let's buy it up. Let's do this, Ace. Go on there and, and finish your story. Complete that story. Keep that carriage. Get that glass slipper. Do your thing. Um, as far as her drinking champagne and this not being the occasion, you're wrong. Champagne is a drink for any occasion. You can drink it in victory and defeat. It is a very neutral choice and it's appropriate for all occasions. So I'm not gonna stop drinking my champagne because Laura is a winner, she's always been a winner. And this is not the end of her Star Wars story. She's still, despite today, the best Star Wars competitor in this league. Fair enough there, Shannon. Look, you have the IG tournament still. Uh, Mike has his match with Greg Alba that will be airing tomorrow for mm -hmm. everyone on YouTube. And then Chance obviously has his first uh, victory against Paulo Yamo, looking for the winner of Goddard and Parker. Mm -hmm. So, Laura, this is, uh, you know, the Star Wars division most likely might be on and out until next season but what do you do in the off season do you do, do you have a preference do you want alex damon to beat either one of these guys or do you just want a shot at the belt next season there is nothing i want more in this life than to see alex damon lose so i very <laughs> much am looking forward to whoever gets to him taking him down hopefully this year um and if it's not this year then maybe it'll be me next year so i'm looking forward to it either way well, thank you to both Shannon and Laura. Again, didn't go your way today, but you can't. I mean, heads up high on this one. It was a one one question. It literally was one question with yep. uh, with the one point. And, and Laura, you got to remember that that mistake that you made that that not trusting your gut and just changing your answer has happened to every champion and virtually every player. It's not a rookie mistake. It's not that you didn't know enough or you didn't perform well enough. It's something that literally everyone has done and everyone can sympathize with. So it's absolutely nothing to uh, hang your head about or get discouraged about. I know you, I know your work ethic. I know where your heart is in this. And uh, I mean, this is this is a blip, it's nothing. So we'll be back, don't worry. Agreed. Christian, that might as well say Laura Kelly because yeah. I would wear that hat. That is, This is Laura Kelly's hat from now on. Serious. All right. Well, Laura and Shannon, thank you guys so much. Um, and we'll see you uh, very soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. So we're going to now we're going to before we bring back. Well, here we go. This is the finals. We started with Andres and Josh Quavedo. Well, Andres Cabrera, as he takes his massive swig of his 70 gallon bottle of water, as he should right now. He Andres Cabrera faces Andrew the Hunter Demolanta. Lots of people. Thought Demolanta could get there. Lots of people did. Some people had Scrimshaw, but a lot of people had Demolanta. I can tell you. I don't think anybody had Cabrera except Winston and Cabrera. Next week, the Hunter. Andrew, the Hunter Demolanta from the Penn Stock Exchange. Andrew, you just watched that match. What were your emotions like going through that? Um, shock. Shock. I, mean, I was one of those people that had Laura Kelly uh, winning this. And good job, Ace. Very, very good job. I see you. I, I see you now because a lot of people have said, yep, Ace has missed several, several questions. Laura's missed one. She missed one today. You went perfect. You, did your hand, your business, your hand, you handled your business very well. So great job. Uh, Andres, any word? I mean, you've been watching, uh, you've been watching Demolanta. How do you, I mean, it's, is it the same kind of preparation you did for Laura when you prep for Laura and prep for everyone else? Or is there some different strategy as you face a competitor like Demolanta? No, same prep. Obviously, Andrew's great. He's amazing. He's won every match. He's done amazing in every match. I expect a good battle and I expect them to do really well. Uh, I just got to keep going and keep prepping and keep doing what I'm doing, which is learning and growing every single match I do. Mark? Andrew, how did you do in today's match? Were you watching along? Were you playing along? Mm -hmm. How was Demolanta? What was that scorecard like? Perfect. I don't expect him to say. I, I expect that, <laughs> but, yeah. I, but I actually I expect that. I agree, uh, but I but I will also say I I probably uh, I believe him. So, Andrew, look, this is the other thing. Swag. This is this is now becoming. Mm -hmm. You can look at those graphics again here on these standings. Finstock Exchange now. Swag is in second place here. Should Andres Cabrera win against you? Should he do that? Then Swag would only be down by three points. However. If you're able to beat him, you extend that Finstock exchange lead by a good amount before the end of the Intergeekdom tournament. Mm -hmm. So 
how is that added pressure or is that something that you then m motivate you more going into this match? I mean, it's uh, same same story with uh, Scrimshaw, wasn't it? I, I, I mess up in the Scrimshaw match. It looks pretty grim for the exchange, but you saw what I can do with pressure in my first match against Scrimshaw. You saw what I did with, with uh, Molly Damon uh, with the whole Tidarium situation. Uh, I was able to... Really can you spell it? <laughs> Tidarium. My go. mouth closes. Perfect. Perfect. My mouth closes when I say Tidarium. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, there is no Tidarium here. All it is is Andrew Demolanta and Andres Cabrera. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, 3 p.m. PST, Andrew, the Hunter Demolanta versus Andres Ace Cabrera from Swag Finstock Exchange uh, versus Swag. Any last words here, gentlemen, uh, to say to one another before we uh, before we let Andrew go here? Andres, anything? Good luck, man. Obviously, I've been looking forward to playing you, so uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, good luck to you as well. It'll be exciting. New person I get to face in this uh, in, uh, in Star Wars, so I'm excited. All right, so there you go. And by the way, guys, go and check out Beyond the Schmodown, which is both Andrew and his wife, Nikki. They do a show every Monday that airs on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube, and I'm sure they're going to be breaking down this match here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. We'll see you thank next you. week. Mark Ellis, thank you. Thank you to our wonderful team over uh, at Skybound, where we have Brian and Courtney and Ian and Ryan and uh, Michael, Kim, and everybody that I forgot, uh, Jack and, and the whole crew. I can't even tell you how much wonderful support we've had from this team that has made this work week in and week out they are some of the hardest working people that i have ever had the pleasure of working with and it's the reason why it is going as smooth as it is right now so um to to all of our wonderful production team uh we thank you and of course pj campbell and the writing team abby and everybody too this has been a, a lot of work for pj and the writing crew sometimes very stressful but um but still he and i have been uh been working through it so it's been a lot of fun so thank you guys so much for mark ellis i'm christian harloff we'll see you next time